Ready? I guess so. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special live presentation of Arc Junkies from the floor of Fabtech Atlanta 2018. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Mr. Sean Flotman, a.k.a. Dabs Wellington on Instagram. How you doing today, brother? A little tired, but I'm good. I'm taking it all in. There's a lot of uh, a lot of bright lights. Yeah, know? yeah, there is. There's a lot of stuff here. Period. I'm used to like, a four by four window. Yeah. I, don't get, I don't get out much. You know? How was uh, how was your trip down? If you like rain, yeah, uh, rain. Yeah, there was a lot of rain. Uh, Nashville was about 40 miles an hour, so uh, wow. I might fly next time. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I think I've driven uh, probably almost 800 miles just to get here. And yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm flying next time <laughs> just, just because I'm flying. Um, you're very well known on Instagram for being the stainless master. You absolutely create 100% beautiful, original stainless pieces of art uh, that you're TIG welding. I'd like to kind of get into your process a little bit on how it is that you go about finding the designs to do, transferring the designs to the stainless, and then actually going about doing it. Because you've done them even in a few different finishes, so we can talk about that too. So how does it all start when you decide you're gonna do something? What's your process? Well, it started doing fun stuff for my daughter. Mm -hmm. Video game characters, Mario, uh, mushrooms, bullet bill, cutesy stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, started to get good results, enjoyed it, and um, then started having a little more fun, uh, you know, got the occasional request, and uh, then started tweaking the process. I started out a lot thinner, uh, 16 or 18 gauge to where you can pull the color, Yeah. and then as I progressed, um, I got a little more comfortable with the heat, and actually, a lot of people rush through them. You slow down a little bit more, and uh, the heat sink will absorb the heat, dissipate it evenly. Uh, as long as you've got a big enough cup and gas coverage, you can pull some pretty neat color. Right on. And uh, then with the finishes, you know, I mean, a mirror's fun to go on, but it's either labor intensive to polish it yourself or yeah. expensive in the initial startup process. You don't want to be chucking, you know, twenty dollar plates in the trash. <laughs> right. Uh, and that's, you know, a lot of starting out on a lot of just scrap. Yeah. You know, messing around and uh, as I told Joe earlier, you know, it was a lot of practice stuff for uh, crappy Christmas gifts for a lot of years. And, yeah. You know, it's it's gotten good enough lately that uh, people actually enjoy watching it. So that's pretty cool. Well, that's how it all kind of starts. You know, you kind of do it just figuring it out for people and then hobbies and stuff. And now you're kind of really getting in it to, you know, improve your skill that you're doing. And you've gone from doing just regular 2D art, you've even moved up to the next step and you've done some 3D stuff where you did a baseball and, right? Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I would definitely like to get more into the metal shaping and metal working area. Mm -hmm. uh, I recently, with uh, Works by a Hearst, did a... Uh, shout out. Yeah, just a little shout out there. A little <laughs> name drop, sorry. Uh, but we uh, worked together and did a hood. It's at the Enzatech booth right now. Uh, but that is definitely an area... I'll have to get more into the purging. Yeah. Uh, you know, right now everything I do is just with a very thick chill block, uh, which works great, but obviously in the third dimension, it doesn't it really offer, a little bit. It doesn't yeah. offer anything practical, you know. Uh, so that's definitely something that's going to be a lot of fun in the future. And uh, you know, it just everything I'm doing is just me tinkering around, having fun, and then in the in the process learning a lot about uh, fabrication and welding altogether. You know, right. I get caught doing a lot of the. You know, people will say, I've seen a lot of this video. Well, believe it or not, when you're welding day in and day out, 50, 60 hours a week, 90% of it is the same thing over and over and over. Yeah. It's where the creative side of this really reignited my passion in welding is because I get to do stuff that is outside of the norm, stuff that's fun, stuff for me, yeah. not just you know the same old uh, 
stainless bases that I've, I've built a hundred different times, you know. Well, even, I mean, it, it's come to the point where, you know, how many times can you take a picture of a stainless well? How many, it all kind of looks the same, and now people are starting to get into, like, the cool angles and the, the different shots, it's, you know. It's relative to the angle of the dangle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, a uh, proper angle on a shot can do a lot. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was, that was a hashtag going around. Different sides of the weld or dark side of the weld or something. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, well, we've all seen the Instagram model. Oh, yeah. You know, that it's, it's all, you know, you walk by one later and it doesn't even look like the same person. You get the right angle on a weld, Bang. you're able to see what the welder sees. Yes. You know, and it, a lot of, a lot of great welders out there aren't doing themselves justice because they're not getting a good picture. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a lot of great guys. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of immaculate welders out there. Oh, that's so true. You know, and uh, Instagram platform is awesome for that because, I mean, it's opened up. I said, I've been, I've been tinkering around with this crap forever. Yeah. And other than my family and close friends that, you know, have to get out the Christmas presents I made for them every year. <laughs> no one ever got to see it, but thanks to this kind of platform and this exposure, there's a lot of people getting their name out there and it's pushing the boundaries of the artistic fun side of a mundane, you know, overworked population of guys that otherwise are just stuck in a little four by four booth pumping out parts all day. Right. You know, so it's a, it's a lot of fun and a great way for guys to get exposure that they normally would you know that brings me up to my next topic uh you know you and i are, are uh, admins of a group on instagram called zig unit uh -huh. and the whole thing about zig unit is that we really try to find those guys that just have loads of talent but just don't have the following yet and don't know how to get the exposure yet mm -hmm. and tig unit really you know kind of scours the internet and looks for these people on instagram to then feature them and, and get them the followers and get them, you know, the, the exposure that they need and, you know, show them kind of how to take these pictures and kind of get their name out there a little bit more. Yeah, you know, it, it uh, a lot of it's by chance, yeah. you know, and by luck. I got very fortunate uh, whenever I really started getting to this is when Aaron Nexus, uh, Euclidean Arts, was, yep. still, was still doing a lot of his stainless steel artwork, uh, different Pokemon guys and stuff. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be part of his, and that was his 10K giveaway. And that really got me out there and exposed to just a couple people, you know, and then people like uh, Weld Porn will pick up one of your posts. And, uh, you Kaboom. know, I mean, from, yeah, from there, I mean, who here walking around hasn't heard of Weld Porn? Right. You know, every single person I, yeah, that's here. And single, he's even here. He's he, actually here himself. He is. The cheeky bastard. <laughs> he's he, made it all the way, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's... Uh, and there's there's a lot of different pages and platforms out there that are that are helping people get their name out there. And it's all, you know, it's very exciting. Yeah. You know, uh, your podcast is another one. You know, I was on it very early. Uh, and people still mention they heard me here or... Uh, you know the well.com thing there's a lot of different a lot of different venues and avenues of plate you know people are getting exposure just from the instagram yep you know the that's instagram so world that's so true and then walking around here it's just you see everything it's, it's yeah it's, it's, it's incredible it's like it's like a live feed you yeah know? <laughs> it is it really it's really wild. is now um let's get into your uh your, your torch setup because you have a very unique torch setup compared to most people uh, what, what, what exactly is your torch setup that you're using right now? I know you use a, a Furet cup, you have a special back cap. Yeah, I use a Shea Spec back cap. I've got a couple, uh, more than a couple, but uh, he does fantastic acrylic work, some acrylic and titanium combos, uh, some just, uh, he's, he did one uh, straight up titanium bullet for uh, Jesse James, Pope of Welding, that oh, yeah. is, I mean, it, it's pretty incredible, but uh, I I use mostly uh, the longer ones. That's what people a lot of times will comment on my photos. Why is it so Why is it so big? You know, I work at a, a small table. Well, I mean, well, I normally, <laughs> normally don't have that problem. I swear. Uh, but uh, I I run in a pretty confined area. I'm not moving around a lot. I do have a couple of the really short, you know, button caps, mm -hmm. and uh, 
if I am going to be moving around, it affects my setup a little bit. But I like the longer cap. I can run a full tungsten, uh, sharpen both ends if necessary, and uh, then I run a large spirit cup. Uh -huh. You know, uh, either the. Do you find the larger cup helps with uh, for, getting the color? Or? For color, uh, if that's what you're after, yes. But a lot of times when I'm getting color, I'm running a lot hotter and faster than I should. Mm -hmm. But in production welding, everything I'm doing uh, on my day job is getting passivated. So a little excess color is not a is not a you know a deal breaker. I passivate right. it. It's like it never happened. Damn. You know it's more about banging out parts. Right. Uh, the artwork I'm actually after the color, obviously. Otherwise, it would just be you normal. Know, yeah. be, silver tracing on stainless exactly. and that's not that cool uh, but the the larger cup gives you a larger envelope or purged area of argon and then you get you know if you were to move away quickly obviously it just burn and uh, get nasty yeah but if you uh, if your travel speed your heat and your gas coverage correct you can get purples, yellows, reds, blues, you know. All the anything, stuff everybody loves when any, it comes to anything stainless. Anything in there, yeah. yeah. And uh, at first I used uh, the 12 cup a lot, but with the more intricate design, I mean, spending an hour plus two hours on some of the things, everything gets real hot. Yeah. And uh, the larger cup then even will offer, obviously, you know, more protection, more ar more argon, uh, so you will be using a little more. Yeah. The flow rate goes up, obviously, but uh, it's not something I'm doing constantly and every day. It's just, you know, for that process. Right. So. Well, you're doing a great job, man. You really are. Uh, you know, your account is one of the few that have actually just grown so exponentially in a short time. People are really really you know gravitating to what you're doing they they really connect with what you're doing and love that the art that you're actually putting out so i gotta hand it to you there because it's it's some beautiful stuff i'm a half-assed welder <laughs> i'm a half-assed podcast and a whole so ass, works. a whole ass, a whole ass personality you know and, uh, you can't take yourself too seriously right you know i mean the whole reason i started an instagram was to have fun connect with people you know outside of work yeah so many guys that you run into at work at every shop I've ever been at. Is it Friday yet? Yeah. You know, it's Monday morning. They're already checked out for the week. Yeah. And it, it's really nice to connect with people that still have passion for what they're doing, can still, you know, even like after they work a 10-hour day, go home and want to put in another two or three hours on something fun and cool yeah. to express themselves and really take their fabrication and their creativity to another level you yeah. know I, I completely agree you know so often we fall into that that uh, mundane routine where it's like all right it's Monday everybody's drained and we're not really doing much and then Tuesday everybody's coming down on you for the stuff that didn't get done on Monday and then by Wednesday things are cooking real good Thursday people are pretty much checked out because tomorrow's Friday and then on Friday you ain't, you ain't getting anything done you know so I mean it, it is it, it's nice to kind of have that that extra hobby to to re-inspire the passion of what we do as welders you know because you're right you can fall into that mundane routine over and over and over but you know if you get as much out of this as you're willing to put into it it's out there it really is you know and, and you know people like you are, are, are showing that so yeah you know it and you can fall into you know I'm not gonna say that I don't if I had a, a 40 hour work week of the exact same thing that burnouts don't happen but no, I mean, it, it is it is a nice way to curb things and you know to to work with people you know, other than just the guys that work, thankless people at, at work that don't, you know, don't appreciate you helping out and are not willing to help you out. Right. You know, a lot of people in the community are willing to reach out and help people, uh, whether it be in the welding, the polishing aspects of it, you know, because that's, that's actually how I got my start was in a polishing shop and, uh, and started doing repair work. Uh, when there was an open booth and welders didn't want to repair, you know, nobody wants to repair something a grinder. Oh no! They have yeah. a hack job on it. Yeah. It's the least glamorous part of the job. Oh, totally. But that's when you start seeing stuff flying out of the booth. And yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're you're one step away from the dumpster at yes. that point. You know. And uh, but re 
saving recycled or soon to be recycled material also will make you a better welder. So I mean, you know, there's, there's one a man's lot. trash is another man's trash. Yeah, well, yeah. and you know, that's where a lot of a lot of my stuff gets to start right out of the trash. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, there's uh, and there's a lot of scrap art. It's a cool thing. You yeah, know? It taking, very much taking is. something that was literally going to be nickels and turn it into something pretty awesome, you know, so. Absolutely. Uh, Dabs, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show, man. And I appreciate you having blast. me again and letting me bore everybody. Hey, you know what? It was fun for me. So um, before I let you go, though, please uh, tell the world where they can find you on Instagram and see the stuff that you're doing. Uh, they can find me at Dabs Wellington, uh, and I will overpost daily and <laughs> drown your feed in uh, Rainbow Wells. There you go. All right, brother. Thank you so much for coming thank on the show. Thank you for having me. All right, awesome. Until next time, everybody, stay safe. Stay with me. And weld hard. And weld hard. <laughs> Is that really recommended? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs>